So you currently have basic sketch on your work. If you look at the clouds specifically, all you see are the outlines of the clouds. There's very minimal details going on inside the clouds. You want no details really because there's no point. You're going to add those details in and paint later on. Now, after you have this basic sketch, I want you to think of following. You want to think about what types of colors you want to use in your work. Now, you can choose to be realistic, and that means you're using the exact colors that you see on your picture. Or, you have two other options. You can use a saturated palette. And if you look at this example, the photo on the right is not the same as the painting on the left. The painter decided to enhance the yellow greens in their work and to enhance the blue greens in the river and saturate or brighten the colors to make it more intense. Your other option is you can desaturate or dull the colors down to make it a little bit less intense on your eyes. It really depends on your preference and what you think will fit with your painting. So let's get into that technical term, saturation. Okay. You are semi-familiar with this term from back in sixth grade. Remember the hue, the pure color? Remember when we were mixing our secondaries and our tertiaries, yellow-green, blue-green, and how bright those colors were? Those were pure colors or saturated colors. Nothing was mixed into them, and made, that's what made them pure and bright. Now, if you add white into the pure colors, it's considered desaturated. It's not as bright as it once was because you added white into it. If you decide to add black into your hue, you dulled your color down in a different way. It's darker, but also duller not as bright as the actual hue. So let's try to um, apply this knowledge to real life. Which color is more saturated? The cadmium yellow on the right or the yellow ochre on the left? Basically, which color is the brighter one? If you said that the cadmium yellow on the right was the brighter, more saturated color, then you're correct. The yellow ochre is still in the yellow family, except it's a desaturated version of that color. Let's take the idea of saturation even to a deeper level. So if you look, you have a value scale, or actually three value scales. On each end is a complementary color. If you look at the red, the artist slowly added green to the red to desaturate or neutralize the color to the point of gray that you see in the center. Conversely, if you look at the green, the artist add a little, added a little bit of red to the green, making the green duller or desaturated into gray. So if you want an unsaturated color scheme, you want to pick colors that are more towards the center of these value scales or color scales. And if you want a more saturated color scheme, a brighter color scheme, you want to stick towards the outside of these scales. So you, remember, you have three choices. Realism, your colors looking exactly like the photo. You have a more saturated palette you can work with, which is the photo on the left. The colors are brighter than what they actually appear. Or you have the option of desaturated or duller, which is the photo on the right. Remember, to make the duller colors, you're going to add in some browns and some complements, maybe white as well, to dull down the color. To have something brighter, like the left, you're not going to add too much into your mixtures of paint. The last third option is your artistic license. So you can change 
completely change colors of different things if you'd like as well. So for example, I would choose to do the desaturated photo or color scheme, but instead of doing that gray background that you see, I would probably pick a different color background. One of the neutralized purples in the center would probably be my choice, Those, that like steel, cool, gray kind of option. It'll subtly make the rose stand out without adding too much into the picture. So for the rest of the period, you're going to take your photo out and you're going to sit down and you're going to decide what palette of colors you would like to have in your painting. If you need or want to, you can get a scrap piece of paper or your sketchbook out and you can slap some colors of paint down and see how they look together before you make your decision. If you look above on this slide, these are the actual paint colors that you have to mix with. You have a couple of more options than you normally do. So keep that in mind when you're mixing your paint. Once you finalize your palette of colors, you're going to start mixing large amounts of the three major colors you're planning on using in your painting. You are going to mix large amounts. They're going to fill the entire Tupperware container. You're going to feel like you're being wasteful and you should act like you're wasteful because you don't want to mix these colors again unless you're desperate. So the more paint, the merrier. Have fun. Figure in figuring it out, and if you need me, I'm here.